Felicia, I'm here for our business meeting. Oh, well, I'll be right out, darling. You don't mind meeting here instead of the office, do you? No, I think you're right. Less chance of our being interrupted here. Well, let him come. He'll find that all the books are in order. When do you need it? Oh, <laughs> now. Uh, well, tomorrow, the day after at the latest. I'll sell some stocks. I'll call my broker today, but it's going to take some time. Well, how much time? A couple of days, I would think. Day after tomorrow? It doesn't bother you having Elliot go over the books, does it? Oh, not in the least. Why should it? Like I said, he'll find everything in order. Well, he is awfully exacting. But that is one of the reasons why I have him as a business manager. Felicia, Elliot will find that all the money has been accounted for. Well, that makes me very happy, darling. Thanks, Betty. Sure. So, when do you have to go back to Chicago? Right after I dropped you back off at the office. You mean you came all the way home just to take a look at the shopping mall? You don't have any other business in town? That's it. Well, you know, architects are naturally visual people, or they better be. Mm. And I'm no different. I wanted to get one last look at that terrain before I made some alterations in my sketches. And then you'll be all set when that deal for the shopping mall comes through. And it better come through. Well, Quinn and I are going to have conniptions. Yeah. Well, you tell Quinn she's missed at the office, all right? Not to worry. She'll be in harness next week. Yeah. Gil, did you get me in trouble with the cops? Brian, help me. I need some answers. Sandy, at this point, finding the $6,000 under the loose floorboard in Alma's motel room doesn't entirely clear blame. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you talking about? Now, I thought we agreed that that $6,000 was blackmail money. Yes, it would appear that somebody was paying Alma off. Well, it couldn't have been Blaine. Brian, to begin with, she doesn't have that kind of money. Also, Alma doesn't have anything on Blaine. That's right. But she has plenty on Cecile. That's true. But still, all it means now is that there may be others who uh, had strong motives for killing Alma. A lot stronger than Blaine. Another world. This part is brought to you by today's cheer. Made to work hard in today's lower temperatures for the way you wash now. What do you mean that I get you in trouble with the police? Well, you and Rudy, when you were in here last night. Oh, it's going to come out in the papers tonight anyway. What's going to be in the papers? Well, that's something I mentioned about Alma Rudder to Gil and Rudy. Rudy's a truck driver who comes in here. You mean about the $6,000 that they found in Alma's motel room? Yeah, she had it hidden under a loose floorboard. And you know, I told you it's supposed to be absolutely confidential. Yeah, I know, and I didn't tell a soul. I don't think Rudy did either. He's not that kind. Yeah, I know, Gil. But it got out somehow. Imagine that, Nell. With all that money working here for peanuts. I I'm talking about Alma. Nell's the name she used here. You know something? There was a customer sitting a few seats down from us at the counter. Maybe he overheard you. Yeah, he did get out of here real fast, didn't he? Like, all of a sudden, he had to be somewhere. Yeah, he was probably a reporter. Had to rush out of here to phone in the story. How much money did you say it was? $6,000? Maybe she made it in tips and was saving up for a rainy day. <laughs> Don't big spenders come in here, Mason? <laughs> Are you kidding? Do you think you'll be able to leave for London early Friday morning? I don't know. I was thinking of changing my reservation to a later flight that day, just to be on the safe side. Well, the dummy book jacket for Moonlight Desire. You will have it, won't you? I mean, it is essential that it be on display at the London Book Fair. Don't worry, Felicia. 
I've already seen a preliminary sketch, and it's quite good. Not as good as Cecile could have done. Is that what you were about to say? No, it isn't, but it's the truth. Oh, yes, I know. I should never have fired the poor little thing. Oh, please, let's not get into that again, all right? I have enough on my mind as it is. Here. What's that? That's the synopsis of Moonlight Desire that the publicity department put together. I want you to take a look at it and tell me if it's all right with you. Is this what you're showing to the European publishers? That and several sample chapters from the book. Okay. Well, I'll have Julia go over it and see if it catches the right flavor of my work. You've really come to rely on her, haven't you, Felicia? Oh, boy, I would be lost without her. She just, well, she does everything so well. She's so conscientious. She also has a good feeling for the kind of writing you do, I think. So much so that I don't know where my work leaves off in the new book and where hers begins. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe someday soon she'll turn out a novel of her own, huh? Maybe. But of course she won't be any competition for me, ah. if that's what you were wondering. At least I don't think she'll be any kind of competition for me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what do you think, Cecile? <laughs> this is quite a little story. Yes, isn't it so? It's hard to believe that somebody as young as Sally could have had such an eventful life. That detective you hired certainly dug up quite a bit of dirt on her, didn't he? Yes, he's a d disagreeable and unattractive man, but I have to admit that he did a very good job. <laughs> well, all of this must have come as a shock to you. Oh, it did. Now, do you wonder why I've been so opposed to Peter marrying Sally? No, I never did wonder about that, actually. That's right. You felt all along that she wasn't right for him. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have to read that dossier on her to know that she wasn't good enough for Peter. The thing I am wondering about, though, is why haven't you shown that thing to Peter? A couple of reasons. First of all, Peter often fancies himself as a knight in shining armor. And if he saw all that stuff on her, he would probably just leap to her defense. Mm. What's your other reason? The other reason is that I'm afraid that he would hate me for getting together all this evidence against her. Well, he probably would. Mm. There was a time that I could have brought all this to his attention, but that, of course, is long gone. Maybe Sally's already told him something of her past anyway. Oh, yes, he mentioned to me that they had taken each other into their confidences on that. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, she probably had to come up with something about her past after he confided that business you told me about. With oh, the yes, the girl, girl that girl. took him for such a ride when he was in graduate school. Oh, what a terrible scandal that was. So, mm. you just don't want history to repeat itself, is that it? Well, what are you going to do? I mean, what are your plans? Well, before I do anything drastic, I'm going to try to postpone the wedding for as long as possible. <laughs> Hoping that Peter will come to his senses. Or fall in love with somebody else. That does happen, you know. Certainly does. Yes, Martin. There's someone at the front door to see you, Miss Love. Who is it? He said his name is Perry. Uh, he's a very young man, and he said that you would know who it is. Perry Hutchins? Oh, he didn't say. Well, show him in. Very well. Perry Hutchins is my stepson. It must be him. Uh, he was my, my stepson. He's the son of the man that I was married to, Carl Hutchins and Cecile. He is a darling. <laughs> I hit it, is Perry. Who did you think it was? Oh. How many Perrys do you know? <laughs> Let me look at oh, you. You're more terrific looking now than ever. My father was a fool to let you go. Well, I don't know if I'm more terrific looking than ever, but darling, I'm the one who let your father go, not the other way around. <laughs> I'm sorry. Cecile, I'd like you to meet my stepson, my former stepson, Perry Hutchins. I'd like you to meet a very close friend of mine, Cecile de Poulignac. Very nice to meet you. Hello, Perry. Actually, it's Cecile Corey. But oh. it'll be Cecile de Poulignac in a month or so, won't it? That's a much mm -hmm. nicer name. Yes, it Thank certainly you. is. So why are you here? It's not that I'm not absolutely thrilled to see you, but why didn't you call me or let me know that you were coming? Donna, listen, uh, I really do have to go. So I'm sure you two have a lot of catching up to do. So we do, yeah. but you'll, you'll see him again. Is that a promise, sure. Donna? If you stay <laughs> okay. around long enough, I'll give you a party. All right, it was nice to meet you. Yes, yes, All right. I look bye forward bye. to seeing you again. Okay, see you Bye-bye, Cecile. So, 
thought brings you to Bay City. Have you come for a visit? Well, I was hoping you could uh, put me up for a few days, uh, if there's room. If there's room. I have rooms, darling. I have rooms and rooms. I live here all by myself, except for the servants. Do, do you have any luggage? Oh, yeah, it's in the trunk of my car. Um, Marka? Ma Marka? Yes, Miss Uh, give me the keys to your car. Would you please get the luggage out of Mr. Hutchins' trunk? Where's your car? Oh, I, I pulled right up in the driveway. It's the uh, red sports car. And put the luggage on uh, the landing. We'll figure out what room to put you in later. Very well, Miss Love. Thank you. Well, I hope you brought enough so that you can stay for a while. Oh, I brought all my things from college. Oh, that's right. You graduated from college. I, how exciting. I would love to have a picture of you in your cap and your gown. And holding a diploma? I think I can oblige you. Oh, that is adorable. And you look so impressive. Mm. Can I have it? Sure. Well, what does your father say now? He said you would never graduate from college. Well, I'm afraid he was right. What do you mean? Here you're standing here with a diploma in your hand. Well, that happens to be an empty diploma case. I had the picture taken to send to him. You mean you didn't really graduate? Nope. And Carl doesn't know about it? Dad's in Europe. Well, he's going to come back sometime. What are you going to tell I him? I know. Then? That's why I'm here. I'll need a place to hide out when he returns from Europe and learns the truth. Perry, you are terrible. Do you know that? I know. to work. He really loved your point. Oh, thank you. I'm a renaissance woman, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mac. Hello, Rachel. Awfully nice to see you. It's a nice surprise. Yeah, well, it's very good to have Sandy back from the hospital. Yeah, everything's good. He appreciates like your to... flowers very much. Oh, good. Anybody want anything cool to drink? I don't think so. I can only stay a minute. Thank you, Vivian. I wanted to ask, can I take Amanda in town for a short visit? Oh, yes. Amanda. She'd love to see Sammy. She's downstairs with Matthew. You want her dressed formally or informally for this visit? Well, on consideration, I think this will be an informal visit. Okay. So she can go just as she is. <laughs> okay. Do you have a minute? Sure. I, I'm just working outside the minute. Seems there's been an interesting development in Blaine's case. The police found $6,000 in Alma's motel room. Six thousand dollars? In cash? Mm-hmm. Well, why didn't they find this before? It was in a shoebox under a loose board in the floor of the room. Lucky to find it at all. How did you hear about this? Well, Sergeant Gorman came over with Brian to question Blaine. And Brian told me something else interesting. It's in one hundred dollar bills, all new and in sequence. Couldn't very likely be your life savings then, could it? Exactly. That money had to come from Cecile. That's what Sandy and I both think. But, as Brian rightly pointed out, there's still no proof that she was paying Alma off. Well, wait a minute. That doesn't matter, does it? I mean, Blaine's off the hook anyway. Oh, not quite. Why not? Not yet. Well, someone else might have a motive for murdering Alma. But so far, Blaine is the only one that they are sure had both motive and opportunity. So they could still arrest her? Mm-hmm. Well, don't the police know that there's something else they might be able to find in that motel room? The diary? Yeah. Yes, but even if Alma hid it there, don't you think that someone else would have taken it? The murderer. Hi, Marty. Hi, Hello. Marty. There's my darling girl. Mm -hmm. Are we going to go see Sandy today? Yes, right away now. And he's going to see how pretty you look. Vivian, could you take her out to the car? We'll be right there. Sure. Come on, Anders. Okay, we'll see you in just a little. Bye, okay. Bye, Bye sweetie. Be Have out a good in a minute. Time. Listen, the money. Does Cecile know that this $6,000 has been found yet? I'm quite certain she doesn't. At least not yet. 
Oh, I'd do anything to be in the room with her when she hears the news. Peter, you absolutely astonish me sometimes. Why? Because I tell you that Perry suddenly turned up and you don't seem surprised at all. But wasn't he always running off to you to get himself out of scrapes when you were married to his father? Hmm? Peter, Carl and I are divorced now. Donna, that wasn't that long ago. And uh, Perry obviously still has a very strong attachment to you. You're right. He does. And when I saw him at the house, and I feel, felt like nothing had changed between us. I felt as if he were still my stepson. See, there you are. Carl never understood him. He alternated in between feeling indifferent and severe. Perry never even had a chance. So what's he going to do now? Hide out with you? I don't know. When Carl comes back from Europe and finds out that Perry didn't graduate from college, all hell is going to break loose. Yes, and you are going to be right in the middle of it if you don't watch out. Well, what can I do? I can't turn him out. Besides, I'm very fond of him. He's charming and amusing, and he's extremely attractive. Peter, maybe you can think of something for him to do for the summer. Yeah, he can get a job. It'll do him good. I understand jobs are very hard to come by these days. Yes, they are. Unemployment is very high. Yes, I read something about that recently. Peter? Hey, Sally, come oh, on hello, in. Hello, Sally. I was going to call you today. Now I don't have to. I'm glad Peter's here, too. Oh, I have a feeling this is about our engagement party <laughs> next week. Yes, it is, but we're going to have to discuss the details later because I have to get home to attend to an unexpected guest who arrived, Perry Hutchins. I have to see that he settled in. Perry was once Donna's stepson. Yes, I was like a mother to him. Mother? You aren't that much older than Perry. Well, that didn't keep me from feeling responsible for him, and I still do. Which reminds me, I have to get back because he was so exhausted from driving all night, he fell asleep on the couch while I was talking to him. Yes, you get back to Perry. Are you trying to get rid of me? I'll go if you promise to come out to the house later in the day for drinks. Both of you. I want Perry to feel welcome. Sure. We'll be there. <laughs> Peter, you haven't seen Perry in almost three or four years, and he's turned into a stunning young man. Oh, well, then I'm not sure I'm going to bring Sally with me. <laughs> The role of Julia Shearer is now being played by Jonna Lee. Love dies at dawn. My love arrives with the dawn? No, no, scratch that. That's a lousy title. But I, I do like Love Dies at Dawn, all right? Do you have a story to go with it? No, no, not yet. But sometimes if I play around with the titles, it gives me some ideas for a plot for a new novel. Yeah? Really? Mm-hmm. What uh, is the look about? Oh, nothing. Come on, tell me. Well, in the writing class I took from Jamie Frame, he said that it's not a good idea to start with a title, then write a <clears throat> story to fit it. Well, that's true for the run-of-the-mill writer. But rules are made to be broken, Julia especially by someone like me, who knows exactly what they're doing. My love dies with the dawn. That's it. Now, let us see what kind of story that title evokes, all right? It's about the kind of love that just doesn't last. Right. Now, take this beautiful young heroine, searching for a love that will endure. Not the kind that dies with the dawn. Hey, you got that? Yes. The search for love is one of your most popular themes. Yes. I use it at least once a year. Now, Julia. We'll have our heroine get into all kinds of trouble in search for this love. Oh my God. The first man in her life was the one who could have given her lasting love. Right. But she didn't realize it at the time. Yes, and, and meanwhile, he'll be searching himself, which will give us a subplot. Gone with the dawn. Oh, that uh -huh. is good. It's better than the other title. You know, I can't wait to tell Cass. You're really feeling good about Cass again, aren't you, Miss Gallant? Well, you know how dreary and depressed he's been lately. Seems to be in, well, a better mood these days. And I guess it's catching. Has something happened? I, um, 
I don't know for sure, Julia. But he does seem to be relieved of whatever burden he's been carrying around the last few weeks. So you don't, you're not worried about him anymore? In relation to what? That whole business about Alma Rudder's murder. The stables will be right down. Oh, thank you, Vivian. You been to Smiley, Smiley's Diner lately? Yeah, I was just there today. Oh, yeah? Things calmed down since the uh, Alma Rudder murder? <laughs> well, not quite. I think Maisie still hasn't gotten over the shock of it yet. Oh, I don't wonder at that. You know, she introduced me to Alma, or Nell, as she was calling herself. Then that was uh, last time I was at that diner, about two weeks ago. Yeah, what'd you think of her? Huh. I thought she was weird. So did I. I got a pie in the oven. Excuse me, goodbye. Bill? Oh, hello, Rachel. You seemed a million miles away. Oh, I was just thinking about something. Uh, you have some checks for me to sign. Yeah, I wouldn't bother you, but these bills have to be paid immediately, and Quinn's not right. going to be back till next week, so. You seem very preoccupied. Yeah, well, I'm just thinking about something, the same thing that I was thinking about when you came in. Might as well tell you, the police didn't want it leaked out, but uh, it's going to be in the evening papers anyway. The $6,000 that they found in Alma's motel. Yeah, how'd you hear about it? Well, I'd like to ask you the same thing. I heard about it indirectly from Mayor Bra Bancroft. Well, I was at Smiley's Diner right after the police found it. And Maisie told me. She's the waitress there. She told me in confidence, and as a matter of fact, she thought that I was the one who leaked it to the press. Why would you think that? How involved are you in this, anyway? Well, I just know some of the people involved. But there's something about the sum of money that's just too coincidental. What's coincidental? Well, I was at Felicia Gallant's suite with Julia the other day. And Felicia mentioned something about having a problem with Cass over $6,000. Six thousand dollars? Yeah, it was part of a loan that she made to him for their business. But six thousand dollars couldn't be accounted for in their books. Really? Funny. It's the same amount of money that was found in Alma's room. Stay tuned for the next part of Another Work. Tonight on the NBC. And now the next part of Another World. It's probably just a coincidence, isn't it? Is it? A coincidence that you thought of this just now and decided to tell me? Well, I thought it was kind of strange that in both cases, the amount of money was the same. Now you want to drop it. Don't you realize this is a very important piece of information? Are you involved in the investigation of Alma Rutter? Only indirectly. You knew this, or you wouldn't have come over to tell me about this 6,000. Well, I know that you're a good friend of Blaine's and that she's been questioned a lot in connection with the murder. There are a lot of people concerned about Blaine. Yeah, but what I feel funny about is mentioning this other $6,000. Funny, how? Well, as you know, I used to work for Felicia Gallant. We parted as friends, but I just want to keep it that way. You're afraid that if she finds out that you've told me this, she'll hold it against you? Well, it is something fairly confidential. And besides, there's no reason to believe that she's even remotely involved in the murder or the investigation. Well, she was very suspicious about many points about this murder. I went over to see her the other day, and I came away convinced that she is suspicious of Cecile as well as Cass. She thinks they're both involved. Wait a minute, Rachel. You went over to Felicia's to discuss the murder with her? No, to discuss Cecile and Cass. Did you find out anything? She wouldn't open up to me. So in other words, at this point, Felicia hasn't mentioned anything about Cass or Cecile Corey being involved. She didn't have to. Well, I hear what you're thinking. What? Then until I'm more sure of my facts, I should keep my mouth shut.
So, I, are you sure you don't mind going over to Donna's for a drink before we go out to dinner? No, I don't mind at all. All right. Well, let's see what Perry's up to these days. I haven't seen the kid in years. Except he's, uh, he's not a kid anymore. How well did you know him? Oh, not very well. I didn't like his father very much, so I didn't see Perry very often. I think in, uh, in all the years that uh, Donna and Carl were married, I maybe had dinner with them uh, a dozen times. What was Perry like? Perry was very charming. And he was the only person I know who could wrap Donna around his little finger. I didn't know anybody could do that. Uh, yeah. There was uh, something about Perry that appealed to Donna. His charm. Yes, and his audacity. Oh, he got into a lot of trouble. <laughs> and he made a lot of trouble for a lot of people. I think I just put my finger on it. What? Why Donna liked him so much? Yeah. It's obvious if you think about it for a second. They're very much alike. Well, I guess she was always on his side. Absolutely. And that's what he hopes happens when his father comes back from Europe and he finds out he didn't really graduate from college. Uh-oh, sounds as if he's postponing a day of reckoning. Yeah, and he hopes Donald will help him. So are you, are you ready to go soon? Yeah, I give about 15 minutes. Okay. Sorry. I couldn't help myself. I couldn't wait. Good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you couldn't. Hey, you watch out for Perry, all right? Why? Well, if you can charm Donna, he can charm anybody. <laughs> You were in the studio working. Vivian should have told me. No, I told her to tell me as soon as you got here. You know what? I just learned more information about the $6,000 that was found in Alma's motel room. Only. I think this is another $6,000. Only I really think it's the same. Rachel, would you mind explaining that? Felicia Gallant found $6,000 that couldn't be accounted for in the books of Winthrop Publishing. How did you come to find that out? Well, that doesn't matter, but I mean, it's too much of a coincidence, don't you think? You think Felicia suspects Cass of taking that money? Of course she does. And when she reads in this evening paper, she's going to put all of this together. And think that Cass skimmed the money, turned it over to Cecile, who in turn gave it to Alma. That's pretty labyrinthine, don't you think, Rachel? Well, yeah, because Felicia doesn't know that Alma was blackmailing Cecile. Actually, we don't know it either. We merely suspect it. Oh, but Felicia was sure that there was hanky-panky going on between Cass and Cecile. And also she thinks, for some reason, that those two have something to do with this murder. Yes, I also heard that. But even if she puts two and two together, she's not going to come up with all the answers at this point, you know. No. But if I go over and see her, and we pool our information, then maybe we can figure this whole thing out. But what can Felicia tell you that we don't already know? Well, that's what I'll have to find out. What, what do you think? Well, I'm fairly convinced that something is definitely going on between Cass and Cecile, and that Cass, uh, Cecile definitely was being blackmailed by Alma. But I also think that that $6,000 was only a down payment. That's good. That means that Alma was really after even more money from Cecile. Yes, because until the moment that Alma was killed, Cecile was still desperate for money. Brian learned that from Donna Love, remember? Yes, of course. Alma came back to Bay City for two reasons. To get revenge on Sandy for his having killed her brother Buzz, and to extract as much money as she could from Cecile in exchange for Blaine's diary. The diary. That's the one thing, the one piece of evidence that obviously links Cecile with Alma's schemes. Only where is it? Where do you think it is? Well, we know that Cecile didn't have as much money as Alma thought she did, right? Right. 
Okay, so, um, if you couldn't pay off a blackmailer, and you knew that that blackmailer had evidence that could put you in jail, and you were that desperate and not above murder. It had to be Cecile who killed Alma. But how do we prove it? Excuse me. Is one of these evening newspapers going up to the penthouse? Oh, yes, sir. I'll take it. Mm. This is your floor, sir. Let me off the 10th floor, please. Oh, you want me to take the newspaper up the penthouse, sir? No, I'll keep it with me. in order, Miss Gallant, getting ready to go home. Sure, I can come up for a couple of minutes if you want me to. Okay. Yes. Oh, Julie, you are still here. Uh, I think I must have uh, left something here this morning. What? Um, some papers. Oh, I didn't see anything. I was just straightening my desk up, and I'm going upstairs for a couple minutes to see Miss Gallant. No, it's not here. Uh, I wonder if I left it at Stacy's office. I should give her a call. Will I see you upstairs in a minute? No, I think I'm gonna, probably going to have to go over to Stacy's first. Okay. But don't worry, I'll, I'll uh, see that the lights are turned off and the door is locked. Okay. Good night, Cass. Good night, Julia. Stacy, I'm glad I caught you before you left for the day. Yes, yes, it's about the 6,000. Oh, good, because I was going to tell you I need it first thing in the morning. Can I drop by and pick up the check? All right, I'll see you at your place in, say, what, 45 minutes? Okay, thanks, Stace. Yeah, bye-bye. That's me. Can you meet me for a quick drink? I'll explain it to you when I see you. You name the place. Okay, I'll see you there in a few minutes, all right? Okay, goodbye. use that in another book. I know. Delphine. Like that? That's not bad, baby. Delphine. That evokes all kinds of Greek things. Delphi, Delph, Oracle. Maybe I can use that in a story somehow. Oh, Julia, what do you think of the name Delphine? It's pretty. Doesn't sound sexy enough. I know. What about desire? It's better. Oh, Miss Gallant, I like Orchid. You don't think it's too exotic? Wouldn't that depend on where the story's set? Yes. We just have to get a setting that's appropriate for a heroine named Orchid. Yeah. You get the plot from your title and the setting of the novel from the heroine's name. I'm learning something new every day. Stick with me, kid, and you will. Now, we have to think of a nice... Hi. 
Darling, hi. I just uh, wanted to tell you that I'm going to go over to Stacy's office to pick up some papers that I, le I left there this morning. Oh. I didn't want you to worry about me. Oh, aren't you thoughtful? Yes. <laughs> so I won't be gone very long, okay? Okay. Don't let me interrupt you. I can see you working. Yes, we I'll are. see you later. Okay, bye. Now, Julia. You know, you look a little tired. Oh, no, Miss Glant. I'm fine. Well, I feel tired. So why don't we just call this a day? We can start again tomorrow morning, okay? Great. Where's the paper? I brought it in. I think. Did you or didn't you? Thank you, Peter. Perry, I can't get over the change in you. Mm. I guess the last time we saw each other, I was... In high school? Yeah. You've become what's known as an eligible bachelor. Already? Before I've even had a chance to play the field? That's what eligible bachelors do, silly. Well, maybe Bay City's the place for me to get into practice. Do you plan to stay here long? Well, I'm beginning to think I might. <laughs> Perry, when's your father coming back from Europe? Oh. Did you have to mention him? Oh, sorry. Have you decided what you're going to tell him yet? I mean, why I didn't graduate from college? Yes, you've got to tell him something. Well, I was hoping you could help me cook up a story, Donna. Why didn't you graduate, Perry? Or would you rather not answer that question right now? Oh, it's, it's no big deal. Bad grades. But I've been thinking, maybe my old man need never know. After all, he's not going to want to examine my diploma, will he? Oh, dear, you never know about Carl. He likes to know everything that's going on. He's always been such a stickler for details. Oh, anyway, enough talk about me and my problem. Let's talk about something else, okay? Do you work, Sally? Yes, I do at a publishing firm. Where you work, Peter? Yes. Hey, Perry, that's a great idea. Why don't you get a job? A job? You don't think my old man's gonna expect me to get a job, do you? <laughs> Julia, the newspaper's not outside the door. I could have sworn I brought it upstairs with me. It was downstairs, as I recall. In the suite? Yes. But on the other hand, I've had so much on my mind, I'm not sure I actually brought it upstairs with me. Well, mm, it doesn't matter. The only news in the newspaper is bad news. I think B.B. and I will watch TV until gas comes home. Okay, Pumpkin? It's so much more relaxed. Just don't turn on the news. <laughs> That's right. Are you going home now? Yeah. No, I'm not. Oh, I have a dinner date tonight with Gil. Oh. And I just remembered he said he'd pick me up stair pick me up downstairs rather than at home. You mean you just remember that now? I'm a little dizzy today, Miss Gallant. Well, I'm glad you remembered your date. Gil is very nice, Julia. Hi. Oh, you ordered me a drink. Yes. Uh, I thought since you were pressed for time, I'd better. What has happened? Just this. Felicia see me No. She will. She will see it. No, I just picked up this copy. It was the one that was going up to the penthouse. Oh. I picked it up in the elevator. All right. Maybe, uh, may maybe she won't make the connection between this and the 6000 that's unaccounted for in the books. But the $6,000 will no longer be unaccounted for. I'm depositing enough money in the firm's account to cover for it. You borrowing the money from Stacy? I'm on my way to pick up the check from her right now. Felicia will never have to know the money left the company. You just thought you'd let me know this, huh? Yes. What's the matter with you, Cecile? <sighs> Stay tuned for the conclusion of another world. I hope I didn't keep you waiting. No. I just came downstairs from seeing Miss Gallant. You look worried. Is everything all right? I'm not exactly worried, Gil. I'm just a little puzzled. About what? Cass, the way he was acting when he came by a while ago. Why? Was he acting strange? Very strange, I thought. 
See, first he came by here just as I was leaving to join Miss Gallant. Then, a couple minutes later, as I was... He came rushing into the penthouse for no good reason. Did he seem excited? Yes, he did. Then what? He said he'd see her later, that's all. That's all he came in for. Except I think it had something to do with this evening's newspaper. Why do you say that? Because I could have sworn I took it up to Miss Gallant. But when she asked to see it right after Cass left, it was gone. And you think he took it with him? Yes, I do. I have the feeling that he came up to get it. And I wonder why. Oh, I can see right through you, sweetheart. What are you talking about? You've covered yourself rather nicely, haven't you? I'm replacing the $6,000 that I took from the company. That's all I'm doing. Felicia will never know that I took it now. Yeah, you'll be in the clear. But where does that leave me? Are you worried about the money they found in Alma's motel room? No. Of course I am. Well, just think about it for a minute. What? What? Oh. The police might ask me about the 6,000, but then they can't trace it to me. Is that right? Right. And of course they can't trace it to me either. Another World was brought to you by Charmin Bathroom Tissue. It's so cushiony, so squeezably soft, and softness is what Charmin's all about. today, Andy Gibb is your singing guest host on Fantasy. You're off on a fabulous trip to NASA as a woman fulfills a dream to ride on the space shuttle. Saturday night, Lloyd Dobbins anchors another exciting edition of Monitor. Is there trouble ahead for Japan's bullet train? Why is it running in the red at 200 miles per hour? And what's the story on the Cambridge diet controversy? Is it a miracle or a dangerous fad? Monitor, Saturday. Each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Another World.